Good morning from Hosanna Family Worship Center in Pope, Mississippi, and welcome to Back Talk. I'm your host, Rick Stevenson, along with my co-host, Brother Ken Fister. Howdy. And Ken, uh, it looks like the Lord dropped the Energizer Bunny right in the middle of us today. <laughs> we, we had our uh, spiritual Swiss Army knife uh, preaching the message today. And on yeah. any given day when we come in here, we'll see Colby on the drums, on the keyboard, keyboard. leading worship, preaching, running the sound booth in the back, and so he's a, a, a jack, a of, jack all of all trades. Absolutely he was, and so he had a tremendous message uh, about patience this morning, and what do they always say? If you need patience, don't ask God for it, because... That's right. <laughs> Tribulation bringeth yeah, patience. Yeah, yeah, the <laughs> testing begins. The testing begins. So, he, you know, I had to go through that myself, and boy, was he preaching straight to me, but... Uh, when God was trying to rearrange my life, that was the very first thing he worked on was patience. And I lasted probably less than 15 minutes. Yeah, that, that's the key. Is <laughs> yeah, how yeah, long yeah. did the patience oh, last? Absolutely. I said, God, I need you to, to change everything. And to, do it now. Do it now. You know, like that. And he it's was like. the McDonald's Society. Absolutely. And he said, yeah. I want it and I want yeah, it That's now. right. He, you know, and, and God was like. I've been waiting for 53 years on you. Surely you can wait more than 15 minutes on me. But. Well, he used an example, too. He says, yep. you know, if you've been around 80 years like Moses was, right. I said, hey, <laughs> I've raised my hand. Very few. Very right. few people have been around 80 years to, right. to see yeah. uh, that you must be patient. That's right. Well, I'm glad he brought out so many examples of that yeah. on, on the, the promise and then the fulfillment of the promise. And we all, we read it in the Bible and we think, well, you know, maybe what was it, a year? Maybe somebody had to wait, that Joseph had to wait, that uh, you, you, he went right down the lineage, even with Abraham, you know. And, Abraham waiting on. That's right. The promise was you're going to be a great nation. Yeah. I'll make you a great nation. And he intervened with uh his uh, wife's handmaid. That's right. And we're still suffering from the consequences right. of well, that. Well, you know, that promise, that promise was for you and all the, his future generations, too, So, uh, including us. Yep. We're still part of the promise, uh, yes. of, of his original promise like that. So, But I, I, it was just really great to hear Kobe break it down like that. Yeah, so. Going through the sequencing. Right. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And given all the examples that he gave and everything like that. so But we wanted to kind of uh, discuss one of the things, too, that he brought out was when he was doing the Lord's Prayer. That's something that a lot of people really, we, we say it, and, you know, we used to memorize it as children, uh, our Father who art in heaven. But when you break that down, doesn't that basically, when he says our Father, I've heard it said that it was basically Daddy God. I mean, He's our Father. Abba and Father. Abba Father, Daddy God. And when you break that down like that, it takes on a whole new perspective of What's our relationship. relationship? And you know, the, the, the apostles had trouble with that. He oh, was yeah. having to teach the apostles that, who had been generationally brought up of uh, Abraham being their father. Yeah. And then, when he got into a discussion with the Pharisees, before Abraham was, I am. And that they wanted to kill him at that point yeah. immediately yeah. because he was saying he was, well, he was saying the burning bush words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you and I know this has a lot of power to Ooh, it. Lord. As in, with, in, in when they came to uh, arrest yeah. Jesus, you get a good exactly. example of that. I always, mm -hmm. when I'm teaching that, I always give that good example because mm -hmm. they came up, uh, and this is off the subject of the, of the sermon, but when they came up to arrest Jesus, uh, there was a band of men, and a band in Greek is 600. Mm -hmm. So there are about 500 to 600 people there mm -hmm with staves, swords, and yeah. so forth. And mm -hmm. he asked them, he said, who have you come up here for? And they said, we've come up here for Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. And he said, I am. He spoke the burning bush word, and they all fell backward to the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, after the second speaking of the very same question and the very same answer, they were pinned to the ground. 
and he walked up and the, uh, the lion of the tribe of Judah became the lamb of God at that moment. At that moment. He gave his life to him. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it was still on the ground, yeah. but uh, he gave his life. No right. one took it. Right. The symbolism there is, is very powerful, 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 very powerful like that. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Kobe, did, he gave us, not only did he give us examples of, of about of, of patience in the Bible and everything, but also of what, what could happen when we try to do things ourselves. And that's where a lot of us get ourselves in trouble. The examples he gave are, are crucial to understanding mm -hmm. that you don't want to get out in front of the Holy Spirit. Right. Patience is waiting on the leading of the Holy Spirit right. and, and not getting out in front of Him. Uh, it's hard to follow the leading of the Spirit when you're in front of Him. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, one of the scriptures that just really, that I couldn't get past, that I had to actually work out during that time uh, in, when I came to Hosanna was trying to sort through religion and 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 uh, you and I talked about this last week too and about the traditions of men and I was you know trying to, to sort through all of that was where the scripture says when Jesus himself said my sheep hear my voice yeah. and they follow me I, I had never heard God's voice and that concerned me and I thought if this is real God if you're real if your word is true then you're gonna have to speak to me and when 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 that happened when God physically speaks to you it sounds like an audible voice in you and I've yeah. covered this before uh, I actually just turned around to see if anybody else heard what I had just heard yeah. And they did not, but it sounded as if you and I were talking like we're sitting yeah. right here. When God and does speak to you, it's absolutely. that way. Sometimes it's not outwardly or through the ringing of the eardrums, That's but right. yeah. it's uh, an inward in your mind. Yep. It's a spiritual, right? if you will. Well, it's, and, and it's different from my own uh, questioning that I may do in my mind when I'm trying to figure out something. I've even talked to myself out loud, you know, and go, think, Rick, think, you know, where, uh, what, is this a three-quarter inch or seven-eighths or something? You know, so I do, we all do that. We talk in our head, but when God talks like that, it's a different, you, you're able to separate it out from what's in my mind plus His voice. Yeah. So... You don't want a psychiatrist following you around. <laughs> That's exactly right. That. That's exactly <laughs> right. When you talk but to yourself, the, but the, the, getting to the patience yes. of, mm -hmm. of waiting on God. Uh, the best thing to do while you're waiting on the Lord is to read His Word in worship. Right. And David, when he sang a whole bunch of songs, right. um, you know, we, we recited one this morning, the 91st song, mm -hmm. and that song is usually the last song before the Sabbath starts. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I did not <laughs> know that. It <laughs> yeah. is good. It That's is good. That's uh, usually the l very last thing on a, on a Friday before sunset is mm -hmm. when you sing that one. Man, yeah, th that that's the key right there, and I, I'm glad that uh, Kobe did it the way he did it today. Yep. Uh, that was very special, having that worship like that. Because I'm going to tell you something: worship moves God. Yep. It absolutely m moves Him in a different way. And uh, that you you had uh, Judah, which is a uh, uh, means praise. When they went into the land of Canaan and they were going to take Jericho, the first thing he did was sent the tribe of Judah out first to march around. They praised. They praised. Was it seven days, I think it was? Yeah. And, then, and then on that seventh day, they gave a big loud yeah. shout and the walls came down. Blowing the trumpets. It everything. started with praise. And <laughs> yes, that's what, that was Kobe's message right there in a nutshell, yeah. is why you're waiting, praise. Praise. Mm -hmm. it's, it was a... Very on time message. God's always on time. Well, I, I heard you. I heard we were you and I both were amen and back there. But um, that on that very issue that what Kobe was saying about uh, a microwave generation, and that we want it now. 
boy, this is, you can see that when you just go anywhere yeah. in public. That they're, yeah. uh, road rage. Uh, road rage. Yeah. Road rage. Uh, no one has patience for anything. <laughs> and uh, what happens is, and you and I both know this, when we try to do it ourselves and not wait on God, like Kobe said, uh, disastrous results. And you gave the Abraham is a prime example of that. Yeah, yeah. and he gave it clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people didn't, if they pay attention, they would have seen uh, the praise that he was giving of uh, God selecting his wife instead of how he was proceeding. Right. And boy, is that patience and recognition of God's selection. Right. Uh, not getting out in front of the Lord is and getting in front of the Holy Spirit leading. Mm -hmm. Boy, you can sure dig a, a, a deep Ooh. grave quick. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You can get into a 15-minute problem that's going to take you years to get out of. Overcome. It, it, yeah, yeah if, if you do it yourself. Yeah. And that was a thing that you and I, it took us, we were complete grown men before we really straightened yeah. our our mind out in the right way that we should go with God. And, and I think we both knew he was real and we wanted to be a part, but we just, it was all the confusion, the world well, and everything else. I had else. to unlearn so much that I would learned. Yeah. Uh, I in learned error. incorrectly. Yep. I would mm -hmm. learned... Uh, denominational doctrines instead of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And boy, is that a big, big thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. You have to unlearn those traditions of men and the traditions of the elders right. in lieu of the Word of God. Right. Well, you and I both, uh, we've seen people uh, come in Hosanna and go right back out Hosanna sometimes just for the simple fact that they, their traditions that they had been taught are so strong that when they come into a place like Hosanna where we try to teach truth and they just, they can't handle it. They no. can't deal with it because they think that we're going against tradition, which is what we are. And Jesus said the very thing to them. He said it. He said no. it to them. He said, your, your traditions have made the Word of God of non-effect. Non -effect effect and void. And yet we come in here, people do, I don't say we do, but people have come here in, in other churches and just uh, when they, they don't... They can't break that. They cannot that break that, that chain. Yeah. It hasn't bound. It's completely bound up. Yeah. I think Paul said a few things <laughs> yeah. about that, didn't he? Yeah, did, how'd you like that? Uh, the the way Paul was in prison, Paul and Silas in prison. Right. How did the Lord open everything, the the shackles on them, and yeah. uh, it was when they started singing praises to the Lord. Then the the Lord caused an earthquake to happen. All the chains got broken off of them. Now, how many of us would, would have the patience to do praise and worship in prison? Yeah. I'd be having that metal cup going up and down the thing going, let me out of here. Where's my phone call? You know, instead of doing the, the thing that Paul knew, there was no way out of that. Leg irons in, in a dungeon in the first century Rome yeah. is as dark as it can, can be. Yeah. This is not... Um, not getting the car you want, you know what I'm saying? Or as Kobe said, the, the girl you want, you know, the things that we do on our own that get in the way of God trying yeah. to give us what he wants for us, which is wholeness. Wow. He's, he's got so much for us. Yeah. It's beyond our reasonable thinking of how much he has for us and... Uh, you know, I keep telling people, my, my mansion, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. That's right. uh, my mansion's halfway up on the right side of the river of life. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Me and you, uh, we're, we're going to be neighbors up there. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully there's a good crappie pond up there somewhere, too. Well, the river of life has got a lot of big fish. I would think they, and I think they would. And they, it seemed like they ate a lot of fish in the first century, too. Like they, they sure did. did too. So, but anyway, listen, uh, on behalf of Ken and myself, we want to thank you for joining us for Back Talk. We really enjoyed uh, bringing this show to you, and we just hope that you were blessed and hope to see you again here next week, same time and same place. God bless you. Thank you.